दूर नो दूर करना Good evening. Welcome to um, a chat with Raya, the television edition. This is the first in a group of programs that I hope to do. I would like some feedback, really, and uh, if it's no good, let me know. If it's good, let me know, and we might continue doing it. But first and foremost, thanks for tuning in. I have to uh, mention this at the beginning of the program, and that is my gratitude to Bandhu Disanaka, who has fulfilled his obligation towards the uh, Sri Lankan community here. Uh, with me is uh, Joey Lewis and uh, Mr. Entrepreneur himself, Bertie Ekanaika. Bertie, as most people know, have um, invited, imported uh, various groups of musicians from Sri Lanka and uh, elsewhere in the world. And now it is uh, time to, for me to speak to Joy Lewis. Joy Lewis, welcome to the program. Good evening, welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, delighted to be here on your, your first edition. Yes, okay. my first edition and my, my first interview um, on TV. So, I'm special. thank you for that. My pleasure. I, I must actually thank Bertie because Bertie is the one who uh, invited you to come on the program and you very keenly uh, did come and that's that's great saving. Later on I'm going to talk to the, the current president of the Australia Ceylon Fellowship as they uh, try to celebrate their 60th anniversary. But um, uh, talking about you, you've been a musician for a long time. Um, Sri Lanka, and then the UK, and uh, now Australia. Have you performed in Australia before? I have been here a couple of times before. Right. Uh, and done a few shows here. Uh, again, uh, through, through Bertie's promotions. Um, when did you start your musical career? Wow. I was five years old on Radio Salon, and I was playing a ukulele and singing when the Saints go marching in. Oh, great. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I didn't. I, I wasn't as bad. <laughs> I think I sang. Um, but you knew at the time. Walking in the rain or something like that. Uh, that was going back a long time, yeah. and it was it was quite sunny at that time. So, having started at five, did you uh, have a band, or did you form a band in Sri Lanka? Which oh, was much much later in my my career. I, mean, I, was, I was doing a lot of singing um, on various radio shows and talent contests and all of that, but it wasn't until much later in, my, in life that I, that my mother allowed me to start a band or perform in a band. And when did you leave Sri Lanka for the UK? I think it was around 1979, by that time, mm. Uh, mm. not so long ago. So by this time you were quite mature and, and prepared to do the hard yard? Uh, I was older. Uh, I don't know about mature, uh, <laughs> slightly wiser perhaps, <laughs> but certainly ready to take on the world when I left, yes. Well, um, mature is a, it's a lovely word, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Uh, Bertie has not matured yet. Bertie, thanks for bringing the talent you have in the past and also Joey down. Um, obviously you have some sort of a gig coming up. Yeah. Uh, 11th of Feb, we got a Valentine's dinner dance at uh, Cathy's Lane, right. Grand on Cathy's Lane, yeah. Have three bands performing there, Flame, Mirage and Aquarius, along with Joey, Kevin Almeida. It's going to be a good night. Mm. So the bands that came here during um, Christmas time, have, have they gone back? No, they're here. They're, here. they're, they're still here? here. They're and they'll be night. backing? Yeah, they'll be backing Joey, yeah. Mm. What has been, you have imported a lot of bands over a period of time and it wouldn't be right to, um, to ask you which was the best, but do you see a music, the evolution of the old-fashioned music through the various bands? Or? Well, most of them play 60s, 70s type of music. Uh, that's the type of bands that I would like to bring up because the people that patronize the dancers are generally in that age group that like that type of music, uh, like dance music, and uh, so we try and cater for that. 
Um, unfortunately, there is a little bit of disco and reggae and all thrown in as well. But uh, basically, it's more, you know, the upmarket pop type of music. So we are, we are living Sri Lankan life in Australia. Correct. Yeah. I, I, I honestly need to butt in here because I think we have an amazing community here that we don't have in England or anywhere else. In the time that I've spent here in the last two or three weeks, it's been wonderful to meet so many people from all those days gone by. And they're all here and they're all settled down and they're all doing well. And, you know, it's, it's, yeah, there's a wonderful community here. Yeah, I was speaking to uh, somebody a few days ago and uh, she she's still domiciled in... Uh, in Sri Lanka and uh, somebody said to her why don't you come over to Australia and she said why I'm doing very well in Sri Lanka there's no no necessity for me to go and look for some somewhere else so uh, I'm happy in Sri Lanka I think she was a beauty queen at one stage and then she worked for mine the Rajapaksa and, and all that and she's currently in Melbourne but um, the, some of them seem to be quite happy to remain in Sri Lanka and continue with the lifestyle that they were used to uh, in the good old days. Well, I, I mean, I know Bertie is probably more qualified to answer this question than I am, but I, 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 I think that, yes, there are. I mean, my mother lived in Sri Lanka all her life. She didn't want to leave and go anywhere else, and we, we were all traveling around. And So I think Sri Lanka has that sort of special something that it offers people. It offers even us. I mean, we, we all sort of long to go back, but uh, our commitments in, in the sort of countries of, that we're domiciled in at the moment uh, prevent us from doing so. But I, I think there are a lot of people who'd really love to go back there because it's, it's a beautiful country. But um, it, it, it doesn't mean that uh, our, our sort of adopted countries haven't given us what we were looking for in life. And so I think there is that uh, uh, sort of balance that some people don't want to leave and they're very happy there. And, I mean, Bertie seems to have the best of both worlds. He's half a foot there and the yeah. rest of him is here. Um, it has come to the stage, I think, when he, he refuses to take his wife or his wife refuses to go with him. Uh, is that right, Bertie? <laughs> well, to a certain extent, yeah. She's sick of traveling. <laughs> no, but, but she does go. She does go. And she'll probably go more now because I'm setting up a plant there as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll be spending a little time in Sri Lanka. How far is the plant away from completion? Uh, probably end of March, beginning okay. of April. Yeah. So uh, I could take it that uh, your beautiful wife will spend the most of winter yeah, in Sri Lanka. Yeah, the plan was, in fact, we were talking this morning about talk, spending at least three months at a time there. Three months here, three months there, and back and forth. Yeah. I think that's the happy medium that everyone's trying to yeah. trying to achieve now at this juncture in our lives you know, at this age. That's, that's what it's all about. <laughs> if you want uh, to talk about real estate, I think you might have to talk about the Sanak about that. Yeah. He uh, he seems to be the ultimate oh, in uh, in real estate in Sri Lanka. Oh, does he? Oh, I, I didn't know that. Maybe I should look at him to, to, to get me a, a nice apartment or something. <laughs> Okay, Joey, thank you very much for coming, and I'm um, disappointed that you didn't bring a guitar with you. Great pleasure. Uh, uh, well, I, I wasn't told to bring a guitar. I, was a I told Bertie, but you know, yeah. Bertie doesn't pass on these messages. You can't help he's, that. He's got a lot on his mind. Because he's he was, I think he was concerned that I would, I would ask him to play the guitar. Yeah, that was another reason why I didn't want the guitar coming in. But then he asked me to start playing and singing as well. So. <laughs> well, for he, he does a good version of Send Me the Pillow, actually. I mean, he's, a, he's, a, he's a country and western, a sort of closet country and western star. <laughs> Jerry, thank you very much well, for great, being thank my you first for guest. Thank you. Thanks, Bertie. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with the program. Right? Thank you very much. Thank you. Dura no dura karana. Welcome back. Um, you're tuned into the brand new Chat with Raya program, the television edition. And um, my second interview, for whatever length of time it's going to be, is uh, Mr. Willem Morgan, who is the uh, current president of the Australia Salon Fellowship. Uh, just a, a wee bit of background to the Australia Ceylon Fellowship is that the SEF is celebrating its 60th year uh, this year 
as uh, much as uh, Sri Lanka is celebrating its 70th, 70th year of uh, diplomatic uh, relations with uh, Australia. And uh, then, of course, in 1948, with the coming of uh, independence, that, that is to say that we will be celebrating 69 years of independence and Sri Lanka standing on its own two feet. So, without further ado, I'll speak to Willem Morgan and see what the rest of the program plans out to be. Willem, welcome to the program. Morning, Ralph. <laughs> Tell me, um, you have been president for the last three years. It hasn't been uh, a better rose, as if you like. Mm. Um, and this, on its 60th year, I suppose there are lots of plans for the for the celebration. Yes, um, we've got something. We've got a few functions actually penciled in. Um, I think the biggest function that we want to have in in sort of advertising um, the ACF is the uh, the fact that we'd like to invite you know um, people you know from Sri Lanka, um, you know, starting from the Honorary Council all the way through. Our local politicians and also members of our community, so that they can um, learn, in some ways, firsthand what the ACF has done, what it stands for, and what it intends to do in the near future, and also in the distant future. Because I think, you know, given that we've been here now for 60 years, I can't see any reason that we can't keep on going on for for, for a great number of years, because of what we do with the community. Um, so the first function really is, is uh, very, very much a cocktail party, where we'll, you know, speak at, speak in general what the ACF did, what it stood for, what it what it started, uh, where we are now, and then move on from there. We'll then have a, um, you know, a, a big dance to celebrate that, and then also um, I think a smaller function towards the end of this year, possibly even early next year, where we look at, you know, um, members. Not only off, off the ACF, but in other, other 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 communities where, you know, because a lot of as you know, a lot of people have come here to help their kids uh, benefit. They've left good jobs, um, they've left good, very good positions, and a good lifestyle back in Colombo and also in other countries, and they've come to Australia uh, for the benefit of their kids. And we want to get some of these people to actually talk about this because I see the uh, the future of it of the ACF being in the hands of uh, of a younger generation. So, uh, if they can learn firsthand what these people have experienced, maybe you know it might spur one to become members one day. The Australian Ceylon Fellowship has, uh, with, to the best of my knowledge, provided a forum for those who came into the country in the early days. Mm. They they were not only uh, given f funds, uh, but they were given up to cooking utensils, uh, bedding. Um, furniture and stuff like that, which of course is not called for at the moment, mm. but we still provide a service to the community. That's right. Yeah, I That's think right. the last one was uh, several of the senior citizens were taken on a jaunt around town or, or to the Crown Casino or something like that. That's right. These keep evolving, mm. and uh, the funds raised by the ACF goes towards those things. I think it's uh, essential that uh, the, the viewers know uh, what happens to the uh, Mother's Day and Father's Day uh, raffle collection. Mm. Would you like to highlight that? Yes, I'd like to. Um, but can I just pick up on a point that you made just a bit earlier? Um, when the people did come out you know, years, those years ago, and I'm talking about in the late 60s and even possibly early 70s, mm. you know, it's, it's not like people coming out now because I bring people out to Australia now and it's a completely different um, scenario that they're facing. You know, people who came out in the late 60s, you know, really had nobody here. Um, the ACF members at that stage um, helped uh, pay for people who didn't have the money who didn't have the money for accommodation or for even for their flights or for their shipping, the ACF gave these people loans, helped them with all the paperwork towards migration, and brought them out here, picked them up at the at the docks, Port of Melbourne or at, at the airport, and we actually settled them in people's homes. And I remember when I was a child, uh, Dad and um, and you would remember George Balthazar, we, we would go out and pick these people up at the ports and, and 
bring them home and and um, and then dad would um, help them find jobs and you know help them get them a place to stay and all mum would take them down to the shops to get them clothes and all this sort of thing so um, from then we've progressed into all sorts of different things and as you said um, the functions that we organize now is not only to help our local community but also our hospitals and, and, and other organizations here but we do the same thing back at home as well we send money back back to Colombo and um, especially with this Mother's Day and Father's Day celebrations that we have every year the money that we raise from Mother's Day all the functions that go in that we raise from the raffle um, goes towards breast cancer research and um, with Father's Day again all the money from the raffle and donations that we also put in ourselves goes towards prostate cancer because you know um, we, f we feel if we can contribute towards these great causes and you know even though we're not talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars that other people might be giving in you know from companies and all that I think our small little donation also helps this this research work and if and if some way you know, if they can find a cure I think we'll all be happy off from it. It's quite obvious that uh, regardless of the amount um, it goes into one kitty and that kitty is what um, helps in, in uh, cancer research and all of that. Mm. So I'd like to uh, say thank you to the SCF on behalf of the larger community. Um, but there's now one more thing I would like to bring to the attention of viewers is uh, the fact that you were among the first to own a club room mm. and uh, it's situated in uh, Spring Bell South. That's right, yeah. yep. uh, and it's for hire. That's right. Yeah. Yep. So those three, those three things are important. Uh, and uh, more than that is that the functions held at Clark Road, it's got privacy, it's mm. got all of that going for it, That's and right. the hall is a decent hall. That's right. It's um, The hall's fully air-conditioned. Yeah. You know, it holds 80 to 90 people. Yeah. Um, we've got our own tables, you know, nice kitchen, um, plenty of parking there. Presented presentation of the hall is nice. The garden has just been uh, redone. So, um, and you know, and as you know, we're now doing up the garage to other help help other organisations as well. We might want to have, you know, a smaller hall um, for meetings and for get-togethers and all this sort of thing. So, um, and by doing that, you know, we're offering a, a, a good community service at a very reasonable price to not only our members but to anybody in the public who would like to use a hall, mm. which is centrally located. Well, um, uh, lastly, mm. and importantly, when's the next function? <laughs> well, we've got um, Valentine's Dance coming up at the, at the hall. Uh, from that, we've got a, um, another big function. Um, we're going to be um, having a country and western night. Um, We've, we've booked a big hall for that, and we've got a band for that. So we want to work towards that in the near future. Um, following on from there, we'll have Mother's Day, Father's Day, of course. Um, then we'll have a cocktail party to start the celebrations of our 60th anniversary. Um, and then from there, we'll move on towards um, uh, New Year's Eve, which, which for us has always been a, a big event. And... Um, and, and, you know, we Not only a big event, but uh, rather inexpensive as well. That's right. We're one of the. Um, we've we've tried all these pathways that other organisations have gone gone down to you know, hundred hundred twenty and thirty dollars a ticket. But we feel, you know, you know we, we charge our tickets at sixty five dollars a head, which um, we think is very reasonable for what we offer. It's you know we have a three course meal. Um, people bring their own drinks because you know it's. They like to drink what they drink, and they can only drink so much at New Year's Eve anyway. But, you know, the Malvern Town Hall that we've had for a long time now um, is, is a beautiful hall for, for functions. Um, it's, again, fully air-conditioned. The parking is very, very, very good. And people dress up, you know, which has always been a long standard with the ACF. Um, as you know, as you well know, you know. Um, so for $65 per person... You get a very good night, um, and it's always been well attended. Willem, thank you very much for uh, being part of this first program of mine. I um, don't know whether it will continue or not. It depends on the folks out there. But um, 
Uh, thank you for coming to the program and uh, it's time to say thank you to the folks the um, behind the camera who uh, normally keep the show rolling. Thank you very much and good night. <laughs>